Today, we're delving into a lesser known but significant connection between a genetic marker, HLV27, and an eye condition called uveitis, revealing the unseen link that affects millions worldwide. Have you ever felt a sudden, unexplained eye pain or redness, almost as if your eye was under attack from within? You're not alone. Stay with us as we uncover how a single genetic marker can be the king to understanding this mysterious condition. Uveitis is an inflammation of the uvea, the middle layer of the eye that consists of the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, and the ciliary body, a ring of muscle behind the iris, which changes the shape of the lens when you focus your eye. And then the choroid, which is a layer of blood vessels that supply nutrients to the retina. This condition can cause redness, pain, blurred vision, and sensitivity to light. If not properly treated, uveitis can lead to a more serious problems, including vision loss. There are different types of uveitis classified based on the part of the uvea that is affected. Anterior uveitis affects the front part of the eye, primarily the iris. It's the most common form and typically has a quicker onset of symptoms. Intermediate uveitis involves the ciliary body and posterior uveitis affects the back part of the uvea, mainly the choroid and is often the most serious because it can affect the retina and the optic nerve. Panuveitis is when the entire uvea is inflamed. The causes of uveitis are varied, and it can be triggered by an autoimmune response where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks its own tissues, including parts of the eye. Infections, injuries, and toxins can also lead to uveitis, and in many cases, the exact cause still remains unknown. The immune system's role is crucial in understanding a uveitis. Normally, the immune system defends against harmful invaders like bacteria and viruses. However, in hlb 27 associated uveitis, the immune system's response is misdirected at the eye's tissue, causing inflammation and symptoms. Think of hlb 27 as a specific type of ID badge that some cells in your body carry this ID badge helps your immune system recognize and fight off infections. However, in some cases, this badge can be linked to autoimmune conditions. That's where the body's defense system gets a bit overzealous and mistakenly starts attacking its own tissues, thinking they're foreign. HLV-27 is particularly associated with a group of autoimmune diseases known as spondylore, which can primarily affect the spine and joints. The most well-known of these is ankylosing spondylitis, a condition that leads to inflammation of the spine and can cause chronic pain and stiffness. Other conditions linked to HLB27 include reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis, and yes, uveitis. The presence of HLA-B27 doesn't mean someone will definitely develop this condition, but it increases their risk. The exact reason why HLA-B27 is linked to these diseases are still unknown and under investigation, but it's thought that the immune system might confuse the HLA-B27 molecule with parts of certain bacteria, leading to an inflammatory response against the body's own tissue. Testing for HLA-B27 is done through a blood test and can be used to help diagnose these conditions, especially if symptoms are present. However, it's just one piece of the puzzle in diagnosing and understanding autoimmune diseases, as not everyone with HLA-B27 will necessarily develop them, and these conditions can occur without the presence of HLA-B27. Treating uveitis involves a few key strategies to reduce inflammation, alleviate pain, prevent damage to the eye, and restore any loss of vision that might have occurred. Here's how it typically goes. The most common treatment for uveitis is anti-inflammatory medications. Corticosteroids are often prescribed because they are powerful at reducing inflammation. They can be given as drops, for anterior uveitis as well as oral medications for widespread inflammation, or even as an injection directly into the eye for intermediate or posterior uveitis. For cases where uveitis is caused by an autoimmune response or when it does, doesn't respond to steroids, a doctor may prescribe drugs called anti-metabolites. These medications suppress the immune system and these medications help by reducing the immune system system's activity, thereby lowering inflammation and preventing it from attacking the eye. Some examples include methotrexate, azathioprine, and mycophenolate mephotal. 
In some severe cases, especially when the UVS doesn't respond to standard treatments, biologic medications can be used. These are newer types of medications that target specific pathways in the immune system to reduce inflammation. An example of this would be Humira. Besides steroids, doctors may also prescribe other types of eye drops that can help with symptoms. For example, drops that dilate the pupil can help reduce pain and prevent the iris from sticking to the lens of the eye, a complication that commonly occurs with uveitis. In rare cases, if uveitis leads to complications like cataracts or glaucoma, or if there's a risk of vision loss, surgery may be necessary to address these symptoms urgently. Treatments for uveitis is often tailored to the actual person based on the type of uveitis, its severity, underlying cause, and how the person responds to initial, initial therapy. Studies show that about 40% to 50% of people who have a specific kind of uveitis called acute anterior uveitis also can have a positive HLA-B27. However, if you have HLA-B27 and a related condition like ankylosing spondylitis, you might have up to a 40% chance of getting uveitis at some point in your life. Remember, having HLA-B27 doesn't mean you'll definitely have health problems, but it does increase your risk. And the risk of uveitis for someone just walking around with HLA-B27 without any symptoms is still very low. But it is something to think about and to be aware of. If you have HLA-B27 and have experienced uveitis, you might wonder if your kids should be tested for HLA-B27 gene to assess their risk of developing similar issues. Here are some considerations. Risk versus benefit. Testing for HLA-B27 can be helpful in some cases, especially if your child shows symptoms that could be linked to conditions associated with this particular gene. Knowing their HLA-B27 status might help in diagnosing and managing potential health issues. However, if they have no symptoms, the benefit of testing might be less clear. It's because knowing they have the gene could cause unnecessary worry without changing any immediate health care plans. Consider the possible psychological effects of testing. For some, knowing they carry a gene associated with health risk can be stressful, or anxiety inducing, especially without any current symptoms. Ultimately, deciding to test your kids for HLA-B27 because you have uveitis or related conditions is a personal decision and one best made with input from your healthcare professional. It's about weighing the chances of passing on to a gene, the potential health implications, and the emotional impact of knowing their genetic status against the benefits of early awareness and possible preventive measures. If you or someone you know is experiencing unexplained eye symptoms, it's crucial to seek professional advice. Remember, knowledge is power and understanding the role of HLA-B27 in uveitis is the first step towards safeguarding your vision. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into your health. If you have any ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comments section below. See you next week.